Hello and welcome viewers to another budget and leg it video. We are working on the Citroen CX again and what we're going to do is front pads and front handbrake cable pads. Yes I did say front handbrake cable pads because all these old Citroens, well even some of the newer Citroens to be fair, the handbrake is worked off the front caliper not the back because again Citroen like to do it differently which is cool. So, we obviously need to take off the wheel first. So I have to be careful because obviously this is an old classic car and you don't want to be damaging things like this because it's not as if you can just go down to your motor factors and pick up another one of these. So we just very slowly peel off the hubcap. And it's a 19 mil to take off the five bolts. Now, as you can see, we have a caliper as normal, just kind of looks like a normal everyday caliper. Apart from on the bottom here, you have, hopefully this is coming through, get a bit closer. As we can see from the bottom, we have this extra bit on the caliper and you kind of wonder what that's for. With a bar and the handbrake cable then coming back up through this direction. Inside here is the handbrake cable pads. There and then obviously the normal pads are here. So, it's uh, as we can see, typical old Citroen, just a different way of doing it. Hopefully you can see what's going on. There's going to be two parts to this. You've got the handbrake part down here and you've got the, the foot pedal pads up here. Now, they are very simple. There's just a couple of things you need to know uh, about how it clips together and about these because there's a special bolt here on a cam and that's how you adjust your brakes and stuff. Uh, obviously, a bit more unusual to a normal car, but once you kind of know what you're doing, it's not, it really isn't. It's like, it's, there is a few little things you need to know, but you know, it's fairly straightforward. Now these pins, they are great in one way, in the way because they, they should be really fast and quick to change your brakes. It's the same brakes that are at the same type of design that's on my rally car, so it means you can pull the pin out and change pads really, really quickly. But with obviously this car being quite old, these pads could have been here for a long time. The pads are worn, they're not completely worn, but they're worn. But what's happened with them, which is more kind of dangerous than anything, they've gone hard. And once a pad goes hard, they just don't basically work properly. So you have a pin that goes straight through both the pads and it also goes through this locking clip. And you have to basically push the clip down to release the pin. I've seen people try and bend these clips out of the way and do all sorts. All you're gonna do is cause damage. Now, one thing you do need to check first, I'm just gonna disconnect the brake sensors. This is the brake sensor to let you know when the pads are actually completely done. So I'm gonna disconnect them out of the way first there in the way. Now, the thing I like to do first is just to check that the actual pin isn't seized. So what I'm going to do is just move the middle clip part of it out of the way, just enough to get my vice grips on, and basically just turn it now. It's a little bit seized, but it seems to be turning now, which is good. Again, move out of the way. That's good. A right, that pin is now moving. It is very tight though. And it's loosening up there now. Quite good. Now I'm not trying to pull it towards me. All I'm doing is moving it up and down. You get a bit of WD. You squirt it. And the two ends where it's actually joining. You have to be careful with WD-40 because you don't want to get it inside on the disc or anything. I'm just trying to get it where the actual pin sits. And I just want to loosen that up as best I can before I attempt to get it out. So I've seen people break, the, there's these type of pins on, on a good few cars and I've seen people just break them and all sorts. And especially with this car is we're not gonna be able to get a pin today because it's gonna to have to be ordered. So you don't really want to be doing it. Now don't get me wrong, sometimes these things happen and they do break. This is why when you're doing brakes, especially in an old car, 
In a classic car, you have to basically take your time. If it takes half an hour in a normal car, triple your time to do on a classic car. Now, that, to be fair, does seem quite good now. Once I get the pin out, I'll show you where, the, where this pin, where this clip actually holds the pin in. But basically, we need to push the two ends down. Now, it is a bit hard to do it with your fingers, but you can kind of do it with your fingers, but it's just a little bit hard. So, the way I like to do it, you get a screwdriver or something like that, and I'm just pushing down on that pin, which will release the lock on this side. Yeah, i say that, but it's just going to take... Oh. The other thing is, because I can't turn this wheel and keep it locked, it uh, makes your life a little bit harder too. But basically, push that down. Doesn't want to go down this side, there we go. And hopefully just be able to move this out a tad. Just enough, I think that's got it. So what I'm trying to do is just pull that down enough just to get it past the little clip. And you can kind of do these one at a time. I've hopefully got that through enough. So if I push this one down now, I should help to get this pin out a bit more now. That one goes down quite handy. This one, what I'm going to try next is just because this one's playing up a little bit, is just push the little spring, so the little edge of the spring I'm going to push so it sits on the caliper. It just pushes it down for me and it just hopefully should allow me to uh, just pull it out enough. Let's see if that can work now for me. Yeah, there we go, got it. So I've, I've basically wedged this one down and I've pushed another one with my hand. And as you can see, what it's done, I put a bit of WD in it and the spinning of the virus grips would have helped. Everything would have helped. Because like I said, you don't just want to go at these and try and force these out because you'll do damage to everything. Now it's caught on the second locking pin. So. Now, I'm just going to clean this up. I'm going to wire brush this. Once I've wire brushed this pin, I'll show you how it locks. So now we're going to move on to the handbrake pads. Now, again, very simple, just a few little tricks you need to know. We've basically got a 17mm bolt that runs through on these two special arms, which is the handbrake. But behind each of the arms is a little washer, so you have to be careful to put that washer back. It's like a little spacer almost. And then this bolt here, which I'll show you later, is on a cam. And that's how you adjust them before... You, you, can, you can do adjustment here, but you can also do adjustment on the handbrake cable. But you have to adjust them down here first, because otherwise your brake will be uh, on all the time. So there's just two 17mm bolts you need to undo. And again, we have to be careful that we don't break them or anything like that. And we have to be careful of the washer. You can just put your hand underneath. Once you pull it out, the washer should come out. If it's there, it should be there. Right, maybe I have to loosen this other one to get it out. Oh, there it is. So we can see the little washer has come out. This one's tight. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but that basically went in an awful lot. So we'd, we'd have no handbrake now. My compressor just turned on, which makes life a lot harder. You can't hear me. So as I pull this out, the little washer comes from in behind it. And we have the washer there. I'm going to wait for my compressor to turn off to show you the rest. Right, so now we're undoing the two bolts. We can literally put this, this whole thing down. It should just come out, as we can see. That's the mechanism which obviously works the handbrake. These two arms push together like that. These two pads push, well, these two flat pads here push on the actual pads for the handbrake. But as we can see, this is very kind of stiff. So this needs a really good clean. 
So I'm going to absolutely soak it in lube. Soak it. These are the things with an old car you want to you want to just take your time on. Just you know, no harm to absolutely soak it. Let all that oil work its way in, and uh, you know, get to it. So what we need to do now is take out these little pads. Now they can be quite annoying. I've got a little magnet here. They just you will get them. And again. They're not behaving themselves. So all I'm gonna do now is get a little um screwdriver in because they're just not coming out with the magnet it can just be full of crud and crap and there we go look at that it's like a chocolate button I put a picture on Facebook a few weeks ago and asked anyone did they know what they were and no, no one guessed them so if you're watching this and you saw the picture on Facebook this is what they are same again get this one at the back which I'm not gonna be able to film but you get the idea Pull it out. Again, they're not particularly warm. They've still got a good bit of pad on, but they've just gone hard. They're, you can just see they're not. The new ones. Compared to the new ones, the new ones are a lot rougher, so it means that it grabs better. These are very shiny and hard. These are a lot softer material, which means they're going to work a million times better. Right, as we can see, there's like a little ridge or a little nipple on one side which lines up with a little hole that's inside the uh, caliper. So what I'm going to do, just spread some copper grease and again a bit fiddly but a bit of copper grease, slide it in place just like that. Do the same with the other one. Lovely. Now they're both in, but what we need to work on next is basically freeing up this. Now even just that bit of WD-40, just how good it's even got that there now, which is brilliant. You can see, I mean it's got it that well, it's just more or less flopping around now. But the other one is seized. Now unfortunately I've just been talking to myself for the last 10 minutes. I thought I had the camera on and I didn't but I had it on but I didn't have it recorded now as you can see I've loosened all this and the way I basically did it I got these little blow torches and I just heated up this one which was fairly well it was seized as you can tell and the way I cooled it down is I used WD-40 and let the WD-40 go in it it instantly obviously goes to uh, steam because it was hot but it, it does penetrate a lot better and eventually, after a few minutes, as you can see, it's freed up. I was hoping I got all that on camera, but I didn't. But that's basically how I did it. So as you can see now, this is all nice and free. So it means it's going to allow our handbrake to work properly. So what we need to do is we need to feed it back up through here. Just like that. Now, special way of putting this back. You can see this bolt, which goes this special nut so which goes inside this arm here okay that's where that goes but as you can see it's on a cam it's not dead center so as you tighten it it moves as you can see that the hole moves up or down which actually adjusts the brakes down here if you if you do it wrong you'll actually have your front brake locked all the time which obviously is no good so what we need to do is you need to put that back just goes in here and the way I like to do it is put the bolt in first and put the washer on top give the bolts a good clean with the wire brush because you just never know and then once the washer's in just lift that up and actually screw it in to be fair it is best to actually do the back one first and I'll explain why in a second I'm going to do the back one first 
So again with the washer, put the washer in behind, put the bolt on first, put the washer on, can't fall off then. Right, this is not going to work this end, so I'll have to explain this side. Basically, with the cam on this little strike plate here, this needs to be close to the, the little shoe you've just put on. And as you put the bolt in and adjust it on the cam, it aligns that, so it pushes that little pad in and out, the little strike pad. And you need it close to the, the actual the pad of the handbrake. Because the reason why when you pull the handbrake you want it to, to kind of lock straight away. You don't want to be pulling too much slack on the handbrake. So what I need to do is turn this around until the bolt actually screws in. Which is like that. And I'm going to have to free this end out before I can do it on this side. Now the way this little cam works is hopefully it's coming across you can see that bolt is kind of moving like a cam would because the, the bolt's off center and this little strike pad here has to rest on the actual handbrake pad like that so the further it is away the more the handbrake has to come up to actually strike it but not only that this also holds in these little sh these little pads so it has to be close to it to hold in the pads because otherwise the pads will fall out and you know that can cause serious problems so it has to be close enough to it but not too close to pushing it in so that's why they're there and the best thing to do is take them out put WD-40 on them get them nice and thingy so you can see they turn nice and easy it'll just make your life a lot easier for when you come to put them on the actual back and the back one which you're not going to be able to see and then I'll do the front one. So what I'm going to do is put the bolt in first, put the little washer on, line up the cam. Because the cam's going to have to be slightly twisted a different way. Now that one's in. What I like to do is put the bolt in, just let the bolt stick out a little bit, just enough to allow you to put the washer in so the washer doesn't fall back out. And then what you want to do is bring this back. You might have to twist the cam for it to line up with the bolt. Because like I said, it's off center, so you need to see exactly where it is. It can be a bit fiddly. Now, I've got it in. Now, what you need to do, get your ratchet and just screw them in, just a little bit snug, not tight by any stretch of imagination, because we need to set these now. Obviously, as you can see, my disc spins. If I just tighten these willy-nilly, and allow the cam to turn, which it has turned out. Then wheels, well, do it this one as well. That has locked that. I can't move that. So that's no good. So what we need to do is loosen them off. Just enough. No, it is a special tool, but I like to use this. So just something like a big screwdriver, just enough to allow you, so you can actually move that cam. Now, if you can see that, I don't know if you can see that bottom bar moving as I'm moving this cam because I'm basically adjusting it here. So what we need to do, we need to adjust that cam in such a way. So I'll show you again. If I adjust it too much, I can't move that disc. I move it back, I can move the disc. So I need to get it in the middle of them two. 
just so it kind of holds it so what I like to do is just now it's just locked there I'm just going to nip it off and I do the same with the back one you can see the back one right so they've just a couple more mil and this disc will be locked which we don't need but we now know as soon as you pull the handbrake it's going to be striking on them pads straight away and the easiest way to tighten it is use the same thing again stick it in and just tighten the bolt as you would ordinarily and it's always good to check once you've done one just to pull the disc through just to make sure you haven't gone too far and I like to do this before I put these pads back in because these pads these pads could be rubbing too and you might think you're rubbing on these ones when you're actually not so I, I leave the the pads out and the caliper on purpose for doing this again I'm just going to stick this in and tighten it and as we can see we're okay I think I just need to give this one a bit more of a squeeze Now, the disc is now moving. As soon as the handbrake pulls, this will, this will lock straight onto the handbrake. So we're not too loose, and more importantly, we're not too tight. Because if we're too tight, it won't take long for them pads to just basically wear out. Because they are only very small. Now what we need to do is put the main pads back in. Now, this next part, I might get a few comments, especially from Citroen people. You have to bleed it, you have to bleed it the special way, blah, blah, blah. You don't. You bleed these the same way as you bleed any other car. The calipers, this is I'm talking about. Other things, no. But calipers, you bleed it basically the same way. I've done a video, I haven't put it up yet, on the back calipers, and I've shown just how to bleed them exactly the same way. He's been driving for a couple more weeks, and I'm now doing this, but I'm going to put the videos up in a slightly different order. But you don't need to do it, I'm telling you. Now, if you have problems with uh, lines underneath the car or suspension lines and stuff like that yes there is a special way of bleeding these I'm not going to go into it it is still fairly simple but there's a couple of bleed nipples you have to take off and raise the suspension up and down and blah 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 but we don't have to do this on this case we have in front of us now a four pot caliper so basically there's four pistons two pistons that side two pistons this side we need to push back the pistons. Now I can leave everything in, I'm not, I haven't disconnected anything. I can push the pistons back fairly easy. What I'm gonna use is this tool again. I need to grab both my pistons at the same time and push back, just as simple as that. So I've just pushed them straight back and now it would have pushed these two out. We don't worry about that yet. You need to push them both back together. It was really handy, I didn't do any damage and I've done it. Obviously we've cleaned all inside here very well. Now what I'm going to do is put some copper grease on the edge of this and also copper grease all the way in the middle. Now what you're looking for, this should slide in really nice and easy. It shouldn't be hard because if it's hard and it won't slide in, you know you've got a problem somewhere. So, ow, <laughs> don't do that. As you can see, this slides in nice and handy, it's not stuck. If, if this was hard to get in and not sliding as free as that, you're going to have to do a lot more cleaning. Because if, you, if this isn't as free as this, your brakes are not going to be working properly. It's as simple as that. Now, again, I know you're not going to be able to see because I can't turn this wheel out to get the right camera angles. It's the best I can do, unfortunately. I pushed out these two pistons because I pushed them two in. But because I've got the new brake in now, I can go for these two. It will slightly push on that, but it's not going to make any difference to us. So what I'm going to do... Just get my tool in here and push back on these pistons. Which unfortunately, I'm struggling with at the minute. Now, I think that's it. 
Same thing again. Obviously make sure you don't get the copper grease on the pads and definitely not this part because you'll have no brakes at all. And then just put loads on here. Now I think I've got these back enough, I'm not 100% sure. We'll know now in a second. And from the looks of it, I haven't. No, so I'm going to have to go back a bit more. Got it! About time. As we can see, that's got in there nice and handy. It was just a bit awkward for some reason, but not to worry. Right, now what we need to do is put the pin back and put the spring back. Now, some people do say, oh, you want to grease this, you want to do this. I don't personally like greasing it, but what I am going to grease is just the tip where it goes into the far side of the caliper and just where it goes into this hole of the caliper. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of grease there. Now I'm not going to put copper grease on it because copper grease can kind of eat it away. This is CV joint grease. So it's still good for high temperatures but it's not gritty. So I'm just going to put it on them two there. Now what we need to do is just make sure we get this clip on right and we don't do any damage. So the clip the two legs of the clip have to come in the middle between the brake and the caliper. There's a little gap there. So, and we need to make sure, as, we, as you can see, you can pull the pin down. Just lift up the brake a tiny bit. Pull the brake back. And a a wiggle. Right, so what we need to do now is get this pin in. It can be awkward um, because you basically you need to push the pin in and push the pad out, but you're fighting against yourself as you're doing that. So I need to push the, and what I mean by push the pin out, because what I need to do is this, this gap here, I need to push the pin through. But as I pull this down to get the gap through, I'm pushing on the pad, and I'm pushing the pad back, but I need to go the pad the other way. It's just, it makes a lot more sense once you actually do it yourself. I'm, I, I'm just struggling to try and explain it and show you, because it's just, there's definitely no, uh, no, um, not enough room to show you. So I'm pulling the pad out but I'm caught with the pin so I've just wiggled that now and I'm in but what's happened is now this pin has gone into the first locking part of the of the pin so I need to push the pin back to get it past the lock which I've just done. We need to go the middle part of the pin has to go the middle part of the clip has to go on the pin so we just again just pull that just like that now we're coming to the second pad, so I need to move out the pad a tiny bit, which is now done. Just pull that in, and now I need to push the pin down, the bottom pin. And as we can see, that's gone in, and it's actually gone in. And it's clipped. So these clips, where I showed you the first time, have actually clipped in. Right. So once it's in, what you need to make sure is the two little legs of the of the clips are sitting on the outside. So you just see it there, the outside of the caliper. We know this clip is then in. It basically does two things. It holds the pin in, which holds the pad, but it also holds, stops the pads from rattling. So it's like an anti-rattle clip as well. Now, what you can do is we need to put these. These are two brake sensors. So basically, when the brakes are worn, the car will. Put a light on the dash so you know when you need new pads. You can kind of feed these up through, which can be a bit awkward. So I'm just putting it through, just like that. So through the clip, it just makes them that little bit smaller and it just stops them from getting caught because these can get caught very easily with grass or anything like that, rips them off, and then of course your brake light comes on and you think or your car tells you that your, your pads are gone and obviously you know they haven't because you've just done them so what we need to do is just plug them in there now that is they're fine it's all out of the way so that basically is it we don't have to bleed them because all i've done is push back the, the actual pistons i haven't done anything so we don't have to bleed them so i don't need anyone to oh you have to bleed them because you don't 
Um, so it's simple as that really. The only thing you have to do, the only thing that's a bit awkward is the uh, handbrake. Just want to make sure that that's all nicely freed up and without being seized. Like this one was seized, we've unfreed it so it'll be working. If you need to adjust the handbrake, it's down here with a couple of 10mm um, or 11mm locking bolts. But um, hopefully we don't. I think the handbrake on this is a little bit, um, it's, it's stuck on too much and that's why the light's flashing. But, so I might have to adjust this handbrake, I'm not sure yet, but maybe putting the new pads in and doing it, adjusting it here is maybe done enough, I'm not 100% sure yet, I'll have to get it on the deck to see. All I've got to now do is put the two wheels back on, tighten up and it's done, it's as simple as that. So I hope it helps, thumbs up and subscribe and don't forget to get your hands dirty, see you for the next one.